Okay, welcome back. This is part two of the free any guide, starting with midday gardens. Not really starting, is it? It's part two. Anyway. Straight away though, we do have a Bianca cutscene to think about. If I walk much further forward than this, I'm going to trigger it. For console, that's no problem at all because IGT will pause during cutscenes. But on PC, there's a couple ways about it. We can either go around to the left here, up to maybe the bridge. You get a sort of idea of what kind of trigger zone we have. Or you can even charge jump straight over into the water. We we'll charge down to meet Dave. I'm gonna make our way over to Enchanted Towers, use this little projectile to make our way in. Sometimes I arrive at this level with no sparks at all. Um, you could opt to do a quick continue to give sparks back or even search for some fodder. But it's not too important, well, unless you collide with that enemy for no reason. The reason for that is because we're going to do an uh, intentional quick continue very shortly. This is the fastest way to reach Gladys. Now from here, you can continue to go all the way around and then glide to the end of level. But we're here to speedrun. So as well as getting ourselves closer to end of level here, we're going to get Sparks back. Continue to dodge the NPC dialogue box there. Don't really want to talk to them. You can parkour your way up to here. And we're going to perform a boosted jump now. Yeah, boosted jumps are not really like charge jumps at all. But we're going to have to charge to get it started. The idea is because we charged before we jumped, we get a lot of forwards momentum as we go. So it's letting go of charge at the right time. And you know, I can try to explain it, but it's hopefully easier when I show it with the gamepad. Now, I can't make that jump unless I do it that way. Like a charge jump. Sorry, <laughs> by default, I went for the booster jump again. I don't want to go for a charge jump. A charge jump just falls down. And because we're not gliding at any point, we can't hover up, whereas a boosted jump will let us start a glide earlier and at a higher point. So now I can do the perfect hover at the end. And just a reminder, perfect hovers are when we hover basically as soon as we're able to. If I just do a glide into a hover, I might just fall out the sky. That timing is learned more than anything. Like, it's in my brain from years of doing it. Uh, just practice and it will stick. There's our boosted jump. Uh, if you're not hitting it, you can go a little further to the left. Just be wary, the more left you go, the more punishing it is when you miss. And any further left than here is probably too much distance from where we started. Anyway. After the booster jump, we're going to drop down. We've got to just, well, destroy the big statues in the rockets. So the priority is to flame the rockets and sort of deal with the enemies after the fact. We also have time here. We skipped that first enemy. We can make our way up to the pedestal, which gives us just a few more gems. Now we're going to make our way into skateboarding. Which on paper wouldn't seem very fast at all. We need to talk about skateboarding. Now the second part is super fast. This first part is a tutorial, so we have to do the various jumps Hunter has laid out for us. The way the game calculates whether you've done the trick correctly or not is a bit flawed. And it allows us to cheese a lot of these. Starting off... He just wants us to jump off the ramp, whereas they're going to go off the ramp like that. I'm literally just going to jump on the ramp and that's done. Before I do the roll, I would just like to say you should be skipping the Hunter cutscenes here as well. It won't matter on console, but watching them on PC, you're just losing time. 
So I'm gonna skip, hold forwards, gonna go off the side and do the roll input. And it's much faster than going off the end of the ramp. Reducing airtime is the whole concept there. Again, we can do the flip. This one, uh, be careful to time your jump correctly. If you time it wrong, you have to go up to the next ramp and it loses seconds. Here we want a 900, so you need to hold and land the trick. The fastest way to do this bit actually involves going off the edge here. It's a little risky, so if you're not feeling it, you can go to the end of the ramp and do like another 900, or you can even do like a long string of tricks over there. What matters is you land it. And here, what matters is we don't get knocked off our board. I'm gonna do a flip into a diagonal flip. And that gives me 2,500 points for nearly no inputs. And I will use the D-pad for these tricks as well, just to uh, feel more you know, in control of the board. I'm going to demonstrate a few things here. First of all, what's anticipated for the speedrun is we just want to do it all in one go. So yes, I can do just a string of high value flips. And as long as I land it, that's done, right? But I gave up because I'm trying to show you the various options. You can also jump at the top of this into a string of flips and at the very end you'll get 2000 points if you land it. I find that I often don't land this one so I don't go for it very much but I know some people like to. The absolute fastest trick here is more advanced but I'm you know, I'm quite proud because I, I started doing it. Uh, we're going to copy what we did for the Nasty Nork but instead we're going to do a Raging Ripto and that is half a flip into a roll. And that gives 3,000 points. Now, why does 3,000 points matter? Uh, Hunter in this mini game is expecting us to beat him in points before he gives us the egg. But he can't get more than 2,900 and something. I don't know the exact amount, I don't care. All I know is that 3,000 points is enough. So I'm gonna go off the edge here, half flip, roll, land it give up I can't believe it. he can't believe it the thing about that is unlike in og you can quit out of the egg challenge early so instead of watching two minutes of skateboarding and grabbing the gems we're now done so in total like that second egg challenge can be about 10 seconds but i've spoken about it too much now we will guidebook here. Uh, regardless of if it's PC or console, guidebooking here is the fastest way. Xing level on PC, again, you lose some time as we load into the next level. I'll be up there, but because uh, the timer starts during the flyout, by the time I make my way over to this side, dodging Bianca again, I'm still exiting the portal. I'm gonna make our way to Icy, but do not forget the egg in here. Shoutouts to Mingus. Some post egg movement if you wish. Or you can wait for Zoe to zap before you start charging. I see peak now. The start of the level is a bit awkward because NPC on the cannon here. We need to get through the ice wall. I could wait. Or I can do a couple of things. I can either. Hmm, how do I demonstrate this safely? I will quick continue to show both. So I like to flame the TNT into position and then go into it. And that breaks the ice ball. I found that the execution of that can go wrong sometimes. So the alternative is just to run all the way to here, or slide all the way to here. And yeah, the TNT enemy will chase us and break the ice ball for us. Do what you prefer. I'm not even sure which one's faster. I just know that the second one is more consistent for me. I'm trying to avoid as many enemies as possible. Except that guy. Uh, the fastest way up to the next bit is to A, grab 20 gems for free, and then do a wall glide here. 
this maintains our height long enough for a hover. If I just stand here and glide, or even try and do a perfect hover from here, it doesn't quite make it. So you do have to use the wall to keep your height. You take out this enemy before he hits us. Uh, cannon controls left and right, straightforward. If you hold right on the D-pad and the analog stick, you go a lot faster. So from here, I would go here, move it up, take out the ice projectile, move it back. We're gonna need it again, so I like to aim just around the uh, the torch that's up there. This is a big sequence break, because we're not supposed to be able to access this area till later. That's part of the reason why they give us this uh, this rocket down here. This is like a payoff, right? You flame this rocket early, later in the level you can grab the metal chest. For the sake of the speedrun, I don't really feel those gems are necessary, but you can grab them if you like. I'm going to hover up to this ledge. These gems are pretty low value. Um, I wouldn't rush too much here. I usually will... I'll show you myself. Um, I usually land here and then immediately do another little hover up to this point, but you can do that movement faster as well. Here we have Rees. Turn around, make our way back, grab a few purple gems. And this is Maynard Skip now. Uh, usually you need to break that ice wall, break the second ice wall, and run all the way around to reach the egg up here. Or you could just jump up there. Yeah. It's a bit more precise than it looks. And it probably looks a bit precise. Falling off the cannon is very easy to do. We want to aim for this part here. You can line it up how you choose. Um, the biggest downside is we cannot stand on this barrel. Otherwise it would make it trivial. Yeah, the devs thought of that, but they didn't think of this. <laughs> So all I do is I do a full hop, jump, glide, hover. You don't need to do any sort of charging. You might find the charging to be consistent for you. It's a matter of preference. I'm going to do the double tap look so I can get the post egg movement right here. Slide across the ice, do a little jump up to these bits. Jump up here, use the TNT again just to save us using the cannon. Speak to Doug. Doug is mean, trapping his brother down there, or whoever they are. This would be the last few eggs of the level. And the most straightforward way to go about it, even casually I think some people figure this out, that red thief is in a pretty precarious spot. Yes, they might not be in play right now, but they're not safe. So, make our way up to here. Make sure to stand on this part rather than this part, because you just get a little more height. Charge, jump, glide. That's the second egg. And that's good, because uh, the red thief moves faster to my knowledge. I'm not even sure that's true, but certainly the other thief moves faster. But I'm not going to chase them. That would be stupid. Now, I can supercharge all the way around to cut them off. They cannot go backwards. Key statement, they cannot go backwards. I don't even need to, well, I, I will flame. I think I can actually just walk into him, but I'm just gonna flame. Uh, typically, the movement I would do, I would even charge. Oh, I can still hear them. Yeah, that's a fun little bug. When I load in, I would usually do a little charge and then turn over to this side. And the reason being, I push the yellow thief around to around there. And then I grab the red thief as usual and then I come back. When I continue my supercharge round, I'll meet the yellow thief around here. So just saving a couple seconds. That's Icy Peak. What's important though is that you get Maynard Skip. Because <laughs> that's quite a frustrating part to have to redo over and over. This cutscene, right? I'm not going to watch any more of it, but if I try to skip that too early, I'll get soft locked. It can happen. It's better to lose half a second or a second and skip it safely than lose minute. 
over a minute. I forget how long that cutscene is. For console, it doesn't matter. For PC, the timer is ticking for that entire thing. Yeah, as some people say, yeah, it's frame one skip is what will cause it. Now we can go over here and just dodge the Bianca cutscene to make our way to, to Bird. You can also run round if that's safer for you. I like to go up the stairs on the right hand side because it forces the thief to go that way. Now to catch this guy pretty consistently, I like to aim for the tree straight ahead. It's an old setup from Nost, I believe. And just as you get near, you turn to the second tree at the back. I aggroed him a bit early though. But I still made it. Into money bags we go. Well, we're not going to kill him. Into Sergeant Bird's base we go is a better way of putting that. <laughs> now, Bird doesn't control super well. Uh, he's quite floaty because he's floating. We are escorting the Hummingbird once again. This is an optional pink gem. I like to grab it because it doesn't feel too bad. But uh, you may find it's a little awkward with the timing. I'm still just focused on the escort part of the mission, which involves now these uh, heavy weights. But you can also grab gems as you go, particularly golds and purples. I unfortunately aggroed this guy. I'm not meant to do that because uh, as soon as I pick up the weight, I take damage. So try to take out that enemy if you can. There's even a way to sort of jump over them, but I haven't figured out how to do that consistently. That's the only key enemy. That one at the end there, if I don't take them out, the hummingbird doesn't move into position. Everything else is very much just to uh, give gems and also avoid taking damage. Still very much over the gem count I'd usually be. I'm hoping to be about 100 or 150 gems over by the time I reach um, Bentley, just to demonstrate how many extra gems I grabbed this run. I'm going to Spooky Swamp now. You could try and do a fly and skip here. Uh, you might be familiar with that from any Spyro 1 runs you've seen at a high level, but the consistent way of skipping this black screen that will lose you five seconds for no reason is to quit game, continue. Now next time we spawn in, we have control of Spyro even though the level is still hidden from view for a moment. This jump coming up now is a little precise. I don't really want to take damage from him. I like to do a charge jump, not a boosted jump cover most of the gap and I still have enough time to perform a glide at the end. Got a few optional fives on the left hand side there. There's Michael as well. Skip through the water, don't take too long. The piranhas will eat you alive. Polonius rescued. I'm gonna turn around here, got the ladder. A little bit of treetops. Wrong game. You can make this longer jump if you wish, or you can opt to take the treetops safer. But yeah, it's a matter of time. When you're exiting level, remember to change your menu inputs again. If you were just on quick game, then the, the game remembers and it will leave the selection on quick game. That was Spooky Swamp. We're on our way to Bamboo Terrace, but before that we've got a cool little double egg. So we're going to use this super flame to break the, the pots. There's three of them now. The fourth one's around the corner and it's also right next to another egg. If we break the last pot during the egg cutscene for the egg that's sitting there, then we'll collect both at the same time. There's two ways of doing it. Always start by taking out these two. Now, 
You could leave this one till last and snipe it from a distance, which gives you a lot of time to adjust. Or you can take it out now. And once you're up here, just aim above the green bit. The hitbox is slightly taller. Then circle, exit look with triangle and turn. I also like to charge into position because I'm a bit scared. <laughs> but there you go, that's two eggs at once. Everything collected in midday, straight to bamboo. We're gonna have a deviation now uh, because what I'm about to show you is PC exclusive. It's very cool. Uh, console route is fine, but it's not as cool as this. So we're gonna make our way to here. Clearly we can't get over there, right? Uh, what did I tell you about wall glides? So we're going to go for a charge jump into a glide and tapping into the left wall followed by the right wall. You can get into a similar position to this. Now I didn't get it completely right. I want to be a little higher than that. Now that wasn't entirely clear. I will repeat it because the inputs you have to do at the top are very precise. The geometry isn't, you know, all smooth like you'd hope. Once you get to about here, when, when the moss starts to show on the right hand side is when I usually glide. So there's the moss there, so the hover. And then I'm holding around two o'clock on the, the joystick to get around there. Now bamboo wall glide saves a significant amount of time because we don't need to go through all of that yet. We'll still go there, but for now, we have sequence broke the level massively. This gives us access to end of level, as well as the egg thief that's going to spawn in. This thief is very satisfying to get a fast kill on, but it doesn't always work the way you want it to. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to go for a long glide, which is a bit outwards, and then I'm going to turn in to where the broken bridge is. Now the thief recognizes when I get close and that includes when I'm gliding and they're only programmed to jump over the bridge next. They don't do a loop here, they join the loop. So no matter what happens, they have to cross the bridge in order for us to meet them there. We do a charge jump. Now I turn in, you hear them move. I was way early in fact. The sound of them moving is pretty crucial. They'll go, well, and then it takes them pretty much the same amount of time to reach the bottom every time. You can prepare with an early hover into a flame, or you can even try to, I've not tested this in a while, but I think you could even glide all the way to the bottom without aggroing them and then go here and they have to jump down. If you jump up to here, and, well, not die, but if you do so, I think they return to position. Have they respawned? Oh, sadly not. I would have liked to demonstrate something else. But realistically, as long as you glide outwards and use the steps at the top there, rather than the, the ground, just to give you a bit more distance in the air, you should be able to cut them off in time. Worst case, you will have to chase them. Sometimes they get stuck on the enemies. Sometimes you can catch them at the bridge, but you can always catch them later where they run into uh, the uh, the giant panda stone that we completely bypassed with this route. These enemies all dropping purple gems make them worth grabbing. You don't need them necessarily, but maybe you've been skipping a lot of gems. So there are a few backups available. I always like to hover. No matter what happens, I like to hover here because it sucks to miss the jump, potentially die, or even just have to go all the way back around. Up here, decent amount of gems. You can maybe charge to the back to grab them, but even if you want to grab everything, it's not too bad. Gem count should be looking pretty good at this point in the run. Dwight is the last egg of the level. Currently sitting at 50 because I did Bluto. You might be on 49. The last thing we need to do is guidebook back to midday, and that's crucial, unless you already spoke to Bianca and it doesn't really matter. 
The problem is if I get warped back here by an NPC, I get warped into the Bianca trigger. And so all that effort spent dodging that cutscene, it plays out anyway. Before we get into the Worthy gig, don't forget the 40 gems that are there. Very useful, high value stuff. For console, Bamboo Terrace is very different. We just go the intended way, pretty much. We cannot access up there. Very sad. But uh, it's still a cool jump we get to do in a moment. Make sure those first enemies are taken out of the equation. Now these enemy cycles do uh, change based on how soon you get through the start of the level. So maybe you'll be able to snipe an extra purple gem here or there. And do not forget both of these eggs as well, otherwise you're just gonna have to go back on yourself. This jump here is quite precise. Just remember you're aiming for the corner nearest to you and you're jumping off the point furthest out, off the rock, charge jump, you can hover late, you don't have to hover at a perfect time, but if you fail this jump, which believe me I have, from this position, similar to how you've seen in Seashell Shore, a little perfect hover, and you're right back. You may even be able to do a sort of wall glide thing here, but I've not tried that before. Now the uh, Egg Thief hasn't spawned in yet, and they don't until you've beaten the end of level, so we can't do any shenanigans with that. I like to take a little glide around there, but you can just as easily clear these enemies and just like that. End of level acquired. And it's exactly the same with the Egg Thief. I will demonstrate just for fun. Light out, turn in, listen for the sound, and they just jump into the flame. Given that this is the last level, guidebooking is still the fastest way. And we're off to fight Spike. This fight is not difficult compared to OG, it's trivial. The start of the fight is a bit awkward. The rocks can spawn anywhere, they're quite small so you need to line up properly. You can definitely uh, knock them away from where Spike is. It's just important to keep moving. Now here, if this was a bit too close to Spike, I could try to get him to attack me, like chase me, and that way he won't destroy the rock. I'd say that was pretty good rock placement. Now, if I don't want him to attack again, I can get him to do a little chase. That puts him in a better position sometimes to take damage. But the whole time now I'm watching Bird, because Bird is where the power-ups come from. And I want to be able to grab them before Spike can. Yeah, there's our fifth. And for the final hit, I'll just tell you now, once we've defeated Spike, I'm going to do a little bit of movement to try and reach the Whirly Gig earlier, which involves going off to the right here with a charge and doing a little head bash as the egg cutscene plays. That means that Spyro's movement doesn't change. And with that, the Whirly Gig activates just a second or two earlier. Pretty clean Spike. Believe me, you can recreate that fight. It's, it's not that hard. Buzz is a bit of a different beast because there's a lot of uh, randomness to the, the different arcs and positions on the stage. But thankfully, Spike's not uh, too big of a run killer. With that, we've completed Midday Gardens. Before I can finish speaking, the Bianca cutscene plays. This time, there's absolutely no way around it. You must speak to her. We're going to start with Evening Lake in just a mo, but thank you very much for watching part two. I'll see you shortly.